After a long and arduous tenure as Ferrari's team principal, Mattia Bonato has succumbed to the media and fan pressure and has decided to step down from his position. While many may have seen this coming from a mile away, the fact of the matter is, this is the most competitive the team has ever been since the team won with Kimi Raikkonen as their point man in 2007. So what was the straw that finally broke the camel's back for Mattia? Well, let's talk about it then. But before we do, consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on our latest uploads. At the start of the 2022 season, things were looking up for Ferrari as the Scarlet team looked like worthy competitors for the title this season. But as the season went on, things started to unravel for the Italian team and showed just how much experience and a cool hand at the helm is needed to succeed in F1. For those of you who don't know, Mattia has been working with Ferrari since 1995 as an engineer and got his big break to be the team principal for the team in 2019. And as many had predicted, Mattia would have a rocky start to his tenure as the prancing horse was found guilty of running an illegal engine in 2019, a horrid 2020 season where the team finished sixth, and its worst result since 1980. And 2021 was a bit better but not by a wide margin. This is why the Tifosi were as excited as ever when the 2022 season started on a high note. And we all know how that went. And now the Scuderia would release a statement on Tuesday morning confirming that Bonato had resigned. In that statement, the team would share that Bonato will officially leave his role with the team on December 31st and say that Mattia's replacement will be finalized by the new year. On the other, Mattia would share a heartfelt message to the team and the Tifosi and say, With the regret that this entails, I have decided to conclude my collaboration with Ferrari. I am leaving a company that I love, which I have been part of for 28 years, with the serenity that comes from the conviction that I have made every effort to achieve the objective set. I leave a united and growing team, a strong team, ready, I'm sure, to achieve the highest goals to which I wish all the best for the future. I think it is right to take this step at this time, as hard as this decision has been for me. I would like to thank all the people at the Gestione Sportiva who have shared this journey with me, made up of difficulties, but also of great satisfaction. After Mattia's statement was released, Ferrari driver Charles Leclerc would share a heartfelt tribute to Mattia on his Instagram page, where he would say, Thank you for everything, Mattia. We spent four very intense years together, full of great satisfaction and also, inevitably, moments that tested us. My esteem and respect for you have never diminished, and we have always worked with full dedication to achieve the same goals. Good luck for everything. Now there have been a lot of possible candidates for the vacant position at Ferrari, and the biggest one linked to the job is former Formula One's managing director, Ross Braun. For those of you who do not know, Ross Braun was the technical director at Ferrari during Michael Schumacher's run of five world titles from 2000 to 2004. So from an experiences standpoint, signing Braun for the position is a no-brainer. But the 69-year-old would write in his final column for the official F1 website and say, I've loved everything I've done in the last few years. I'd moved away from wanting to be part of a team. I decided I'd done enough of that, and this was the only thing that could have possibly appealed. I've been very fortunate to have been given the opportunity by Liberty, and it was a labor of love. Now is the right time for me to retire. We've done the bulk of the work, and we're in a consolidation period now. There's a new car coming in 2026, but that's four years away, quite distant for me, so it's better the next group of people take on that mantle. I believe I'm leaving F1 in a great place. I've loved almost every minute of my 46-year career, and I've been fortunate to have worked with many great teams, great drivers, and great people. I wouldn't have changed a thing. One certainty is that without my wife and family's support, I couldn't have done it, and I wouldn't have wanted to do it. I will now watch F1 from my sofa, cheering and cursing as an F1 fan, pleased that the sport is in a fantastic place and has such a fantastic future. Here's to great racing. One could argue that Ferrari's top management may see this as a necessary move to solve all the problems the team had faced this season, and to some degree that may be true, but to former McLaren and Renault driver Heikki Kovalainen, 
the team will have to do more than that to become legitimate contenders for years to come. It won't be one person that can fix or destroy an operation, he said. I was very surprised to see the news. Bonato to me comes across as a good leader. He's been one of the calmer guys at Ferrari. If you look at the recent history, the last few years have been a bit more steady and stable at Ferrari than in the past when the team principal was changing more often. I think that's a good thing. It shows that Formula One is a tough business. It's very hard for a good team like Ferrari to start winning consistently and be at the top for a long time. But I think there is something still missing from the Ferrari team that is causing this chaos and panic at times, at crucial moments of the weekend. A succession of strategic errors derailed the team's hopes of winning a title this season. And for Kovalainen, who has worked for championship-winning team principals such as Ron Dennis and Flavio Briatore, it is more about a problem of collective responsibility than just one man. I don't think the drivers have helped all the time, the Finn said. Sometimes the drivers have also caused a bit of uncertainty when they've questioned the team's decisions over the radio, and then the team is saying, well, wait a minute, let's reconsider. In Brazil, Bono, Peter Bonington, Mercedes race engineer, was asking Lewis Hamilton to pit, and Lewis said, well, why? We don't need to pit. And Bono said, we do need to pit now. Come in, we know what we're doing. And that was quite a firm conversation, and Lewis came in, as he has the confidence in the team. I feel like Ferrari sometimes, in these situations where the drivers are questioning the team, they're not confident enough to stamp their authority, and then there's some uncertainty lingering that they need to get rid of. I don't think it's Bonato's fault. I think it's probably collectively the team's fault. It's hard to say what's missing, but there's still something missing in communication and in operations, and they've got to figure it out themselves. It's small margins, we're not talking about the big issues, but small margins which are the difference between Ferrari, Red Bull, and Mercedes. Ferrari are not quite there yet, but they've taken a step forward in performance. But in terms of operation, it's not quite enough to challenge for championships. It's been a while since Ferrari have won a championship, so they've really got to start feeling the winning again and dealing with the situation of being first in the queue and deciding the pit stops and strategies first on the road, leading the championships. It might be as simple as getting used to it again, and I'm sure they can do it, but to be able to believe and to do it is hard. And there you have it, guys. So, was this a necessary change at Ferrari? Let us know in the comments section below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't.